All right, I think we're live. Yeah, here we go. Excellent. How is everybody doing on this Sunday? All right. Excellent. So this is Paint with Lovejoy, our Sunday version. And we are painting a uh, viewer request, Sonic the Hedgehog today. So a little bit of what you're looking at on the screen. We've got color choices for today. Like I said earlier, I'm on an eight by 10 canvas panel. Some of you may be on a stretched canvas, so there might be a little more width on the edge. And we do have our composition already on our canvas. So you've got two options on how to get this on your canvas at home. Um, you can pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or in the description box below, there's a link to what we call a uh, traceable. And you purchase, download it, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you transfer your traceable to um, the canvas. And when you transfer it with carbon paper, it's actually gonna be a lot lighter. I've gone over mine with Sharpie marker to help those at home that are gonna draw what they see so it shows up on the screen better. So leave, um, if you do the traceable at home, uh, you don't have to do the Sharpie marker and it's easier to cover the traceable lines, the carbon lines with paint. All right, we've got quite a few people jumping on today. Let's see. Hi, Jen and Denise and V and Miss Smith. Uh, awesome, awesome. And it totally made my day this morning uh, right before I hit the, you know, go live uh, button on there to see quite a few of you waiting for the video. All right, and actually it looks like there's some leftover paint. Let me clean that out of the brush. Okay, so for Sonic, um, we're going to start with the background and we're going to kind of do like a lemony yellow, maybe a touch of green in it. I wanted it to be kind of bright because Sonic's nice and blue. We've got some raw sienna for the belly and then nice bright blues. So anything that we do here today, you are more than welcome to switch out colors. You do not have to stick with the same color scheme that I'm doing. So I'm starting with kind of a one to one ratio, yellow and white, and then yeah, let's go ahead and add a touch of green, but I want to keep it pretty bright. So I'm going to start with a small amount and then mix it in. Yeah. And definitely kind of go for that sea foam green. All right. And likely I'm going to have to mix this a second and third time. And there'll be a little variety um, each time that I mix it. So at home, same thing for you. If you have to mix your color two or three times, don't stress about um, the variety. So if you're a first time painter and that's what the channel's geared towards, try a few brush strokes. Try the full width of your brush, try turning it sideways, a little bit skinnier line, and then literally take your frustrations out and slap it on the canvas. Uh, my channel is geared towards first time and beginner painters. Um, so I try to put myself in that position and describe how we're gonna apply the paint, um, what you should be thinking about, remembering to breathe, uh, but basically just kind of having fun and getting you comfortable with getting creative at home. And as our current circumstances of the world are presenting, uh, more and more people are getting creative at home. So it's not as scary as you may think. And once you start, and I have a feeling everybody that is viewing right now could attest to, once you start, it is kind of an addiction. And it's a rather healthy addiction and healthy outlet to have in your world. So um, it's really kind of fun and exciting when you first get started and kind of realize your skills and then all this whole new world that kind of opens up and all the things that you can paint and want to try. All right. And again, like I said, I might have to mix this two or three times. There'll be a little variety and that just makes for Look, see a little more green. And you can always adjust too once you apply the paint. And if you're on a larger canvas, feel free to move up to a larger brush, or if you need to move to one of the small pointy brushes, go right ahead. You do not have to do every single, single thing that I do in these videos. Just use it as kind of a guideline and make each painting your own. And I am using student grade paint. So you can see some places that it's a little bit thinner, some places where it's a little bit more opaque. Um, so if you're using student grade paint, you can let the, apply this and let it dry and apply two coats or apply your paint thicker. And if you're gonna apply it thicker, you'll actually kind of come in at this 45 degree angle. And even right there, you can see how much thicker and more opaque that is compared to this part of the background or the other. Um, 
So you'll always, no matter what level painter you are, you're always going to be adjusting based on your tools and the variables in your environment. And again, as we move into some of these smaller spaces, feel free to grab the pointy brush. Don't forget about a few of these um, inside next to the arm. All right. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you guys have any questions today, please feel free to leave a comment in the chat and I will address them while I'm painting. And as always, send me photos of what you paint. You'll hear me mention that in pretty much every single video on my channel. Um, seeing your pictures uh, keeps me kind of inspired to keep the channel going, gives me new ideas of things to teach. And then most importantly, your pictures and your support and encouragement to your community is what's made this channel grow. So I personally want a lot more relaxed and chilled out people on this planet. Um, and I think creative outlets are a way to kind of get there. So please share your creative resources with your community. All right, so we're kind of got our base color on here. I am going to go in with a bit more darker green and we're going to give Sonic a bit of a shadow um, underneath his feet. And then I will put a little bit of light color in the top to demonstrate the wet on wet blending. Um, so you can try that at home. Oh, I forgot about this little area. And I'm going to go right over his nose. I'm going to reapply that later. So with acrylic paint, set if you end up putting some paint somewhere you don't want it um, or maybe it's the wrong color somewhere you can actually just let it dry and put a new color on top of it so kind of getting comfortable with layers is a nice thing um, with acrylic paint all right so now we're going to go a little bit darker at the bottom and you do want to do this while your background is wet this is called a wet on wet blending method so I'm making the color I was just using I added more green to make it a little bit darker and then we're gonna kind of slap this color right underneath his shoes. A um, little bit over here and on that side. Then I generally like to wipe that brush off, wipe off that excess paint, and then come back to where the two colors are on the um, palette. And I'm kind of just with light pressure moving my brush back and forth. And what you're doing is the same thing that you did on the plate, but you're just doing it on your background directly on your canvas instead. So something fun to play with. And again, it will only blend while your paint is wet. So if you have super, super fast drying paint, um, maybe take your background in sections and maybe you do this part and do all the blending that you want and then come over and do this section. Um, so like I said earlier, don't be afraid to adjust based on the variables that you're dealing with at that moment when you're painting. I'm gonna go a bit darker. We're gonna grab some of this green, put that on there a little bit thicker and then wipe that brush off. And again, you'll see as I kind of push this green into the underneath color, how it changes. All right, and then I'm gonna clean that brush. I'm gonna throw um, some blobs of white just to show you the opposite. You can add a light color into your background and start to change it. So grab it a pretty good blob. You'll notice that your lighter colors, when you do the wet on wet blending, your lighter colors are gonna diffuse um, into the base color uh, a lot quicker than your darker colors. All right, and then again, light pressure, just kind of moving your brush on top of it. This is one of the very therapeutic parts of painting is the wet on wet blending. Uh, feel free if you want, you can finger paint for that too, if you feel like it. All right, and do anything that you want to your background now while the paint is wet. Um, before you move into doing your subject matter. All right, and just looking to see if we have any questions in the comments. Looks like we're good. Um, hi, uh, Jan S, glad you could make it. Uh, and you can always catch the replay uh, from the beginning. And I encourage many people to do paintings once a week, once a month, and don't be afraid to do the same painting twice. Um, maybe paint this now and then in, you know, maybe a month or two, six months, a year from now, come back and paint the same image again and then put your painting side by side. It's one of the really, really nice um, 
visual ways to see your your skills improve and see how much you have learned learned whichever is the correct word for that okay so we're going to actually start with our light raw sienna sonic has kind of a creamy mouth and inside the ears and then this little belly and his arms okay so we're going to start with a light cream um, so we're going to start with white we're going to add a touch of raw sienna if you do not have raw sienna at home, you could do kind of the same thing and add a touch of red. It'll be a little bit more pink, where this will be a little bit more beige. Um, but I encourage everybody to kind of utilize what you have at home. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy brand new supplies if you've got um, some things at home. Even if you have colored pencils or markers or crayons, you can follow along with this video and do the same thing with using different mediums. Okay. So we're actually, like I said, going for that uh, base cream. I got a little carried away while I was talking. So going for that light beige color. And for Sonic, what we're gonna do as we go through all of these elements, we're gonna put our base color in, and then we're gonna use white to put a highlight on here. And then we'll do a black outline at the end. So, all right. So we're gonna get his belly, his arms, and again, I tend to stick with the same brush, but I will be moving down to the pointy brush. Don't wait for me to change brushes. If you need to, go right ahead and do what you need to. And if you, again, if you paint right over that, that's okay. I will be putting more um, paint on top of that for a new color. And I think it is appropriate to go down to the pointy brush now. So I'm just going to grab the excess paint off the brush. We'll drop that in there. And again, if you are using the student grade paint, apply your paint a little bit thicker so it'll have a bit more opaque coverage. And um, I think I mentioned it at the beginning, uh, remember to breathe while you paint. If you are finding that your brush is shaky as you go to apply your paint, that does mean you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch your brush to the canvas. Makes it a little bit easier. All right, let's see, I see some activity on the chat. Awesome, Jan, and definitely, yes, paint with your significant other, with your boyfriend, um, paint with your family members. I love, love seeing people get creative um, together and it makes for just a great family night or a great date night, so I like that. Ooh, and Jen, good suggestion, mountain lion face. I will add that to the demo list. All right. Okay, so we kind of have our raw sienna on here. I'm actually gonna be grabbing that direct white and again, being rather generous with it because we're building our skills. We're doing the exact same thing, the wet on wet blending that we did in the background. We're gonna incorporate it into our painting. So as you are doing this at home, you are strengthening your power of observation. So I want you to notice the place where I put each of these colors and mimic that to the best of your ability at home. It may be a little bit different than what I paint, and that's totally okay. You are um, learning a lot right now um, by observing, strengthening your power of observation and application, and it just gets better and easier with more practice. So again, just look at the place of where I put each of those white uh, uh, chunks of paint, and then I'm gonna wipe that brush off, and then we're gonna go back and just kind of blend it in. And there are a few different ways that you can blend, especially as this paint is really wet. You can kind of do what we were doing earlier, the kind of smush and smear effect. Um, another one in some of the videos, we've done a tapping, and we usually use the bigger brush, but kind of doing this tapping method, it's almost like, um, um, oh my gosh, losing the word for it. Pointillism is the closest I can think of right now. But basically, as you do this tapping method, it will ruin the ends of your bristles a little bit quicker, um, but it picks up the color underneath and smushes the white into it, and then it kind of gives you this neutral color in between. So try either one, and even if you want to finger paint, you just kind of use the pressure of your finger and squish it into the paint. Um, 
And hopefully while you are painting, you are forgetting about the rest of the world for a little bit. And that is the best part about painting. Um, cool, and V is asking if I ever paint textured compositions. Um, Sometimes, I think I understand what you're meaning. Um, with the palette knife, that's where we kind of, probably I guess the most texture that I've done. And it seems like most people have enjoyed more of the brushwork, so I've stuck with more brushwork. Um, but maybe I'll even start with a few textured uh, canvases and do a little video on that, and then we can do an abstract painting on top of that with the knife. I like that. Okay, so we're pretty good for our cream colors here. Let's actually go ahead and do the red, and then we'll do some light gray for white, and we're gonna save the blue for last because the blue is um, a pretty strong color if, if you get it into the other shades. Okay, so I'm actually gonna grab the larger pointy brush that I have, and we're gonna do red, and we've got basically red on the ends, the heel. Um, this is gonna be a white stripe, so we will leave that. All right, just kind of marking off the places we'll be putting this. And again, applying it rather thick so I don't have to do two layers, but adjust for what you need at home. And if your green paint is still wet from the background, there's a few portions of my places um, that the paint is still wet. Just be really careful as you are bringing the red paint up next to the green. If, if it happens to start mixing, just take a paper towel, wipe off uh, where it kind of mixed together, and then just reapply the appropriate color. It's just painting, it's not the end of the world, and there's always a way to fix, and then there's always a way to just paint something new. And I'm a huge fan of Bob Ross, and I've been repeating it quite often in my career, um, but consider them happy accidents. Oh, right on, Jen. Glad you got another paint, uh, paint Your Pet for the Humane Society. I actually sent mine in super late. I forgot about it. I painted it and then forgot to send it in. <laughs> but I'm glad you're doing another one and using the knife will be awesome. They got such happy people that are receiving all those portraits. Okay, so um, let's. there's not much of a highlight on the shoes, so we'll leave that. We're, we'll put a bit more of a solid highlight on there later. So now we're gonna move into kind of a light gray and then white. And he's got kind of these white gloves, uh, little cuffs on the shoe, and then his eyeballs. So clean your brush really good because you don't wanna bring any of the red into your shades of gray. And I'm gonna pull some white aside and a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of black goes a long way. So I usually grab some, I like to put it on the edge and then leaving what's on my brush, mix it in with this pile. and. That's actually darker than what I want. Like I said, we are going for a um, light gray. So I'm gonna leave this pile right here, grab some more white, and on the edge, kind of start pulling in some of that color so I can keep that darker gray, because we'll use it in a minute. Oops, and I got a little bit of red still in my brush, so let me wipe that off. All right, sorry, you guys do not need to be looking at my ceiling. I'm actually not sure when that cut out. Ah, so frustrating. All right, there we go, back on, excellent. Ah, and this is why I have not done the day demos just for the tech issues that are rather frustrating. So thank you guys so much for uh, kind of bearing with that. And Jan, yes, stippling was the word I was looking for. So thank you. <laughs> um, and the stippling's a very nice and therapeutic method as far as just that tapping. So, all right. Let's move into, that's right, the light gray we were working on. So again, I'm not quite sure exactly where it cut out, but we have our light gray right here um, mixing because the first dark gray was a little darker than I needed. So we made that new pile. And let's see, we've got just a few specific places that we're gonna put this gray and then we'll be using the pure white to kind of fill in the rest of the uh, space. So again, just kind of observe where I'm placing each one of these little sections of light gray. 
And I think to be safe, I'm gonna make my gray a touch darker just so you guys can see it at home a little bit more. Um, but I want you guys using light gray. Just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna make mine a little bit darker so it shows up a little bit more. There we go. And basically kind of imagining the spaces where we would have um, a shadow is where we're putting this gray. And then when we do the black outline, this will kind of clean it up and give it a bit of a pop art feel. And we're gonna make the black line thick enough so that it overlaps um, some of our design, some of Sonic the Hedgehog, and then some of the background. So again, as you are looking at this, oop, we need his little mouth right there. Um, you are strengthening your power of observation of where each of these shades are placed and then mimicking that on your canvas. All right, I think that is good enough for the gray. I believe, yes, the rest of the, rest of the spots are gonna be white. Okay, so clean that brush really good. This next part's gonna be uh, super exciting, putting white on a white canvas, so it's not gonna be super obvious, but basically the rest of these spaces that we put the gray, we're gonna fill in with white, so that way there is something on the canvas. And then same with that wet on wet blending that we were doing earlier, getting the excess uh, water off my brush. But the same with the blending, where that medium, that light gray meets the white, you can kind of soften that line a little bit. So play with that pressure of your brush and just kind of that light pressure and squish the two colors together. Sometimes it's nice just to think about paint as squishing. I had a student tell me that that was very therapeutic and I meant to grab the white right there. All right, and yep, making sure it's still live feed is going. All right, gloves. And again, remember to breathe and relax. It's a nice escape from the world. And as you are realizing how much you just love painting and enjoy my teaching style, um, check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy. It is continually growing. And um, my signature, there's a lot of the free classes $2 classes for the traceables, and then some featured monthly classes. And that would be, at the moment, my intro to palette knife scraping, which is very therapeutic, um, and then the Paint Your Pet course. And that's one of my signature courses um, in my Diego studio when I had it. And when you paint something that you love, it's a whole new ball game, and that is geared towards first time and beginner painters. You'll learn about your value scale uh, in that course. All right, so I think I've got white paint on all the areas I needed. Our last color is going to be blue. All right, all right, and then black, two more colors. So with the blue, we're going to do kind of the same thing. We're going to kind of fill all this in, and it's going to look pretty cool once we get rid of that white canvas space. And then once we put the blue on there, then we'll do some white for some of the highlights like we did with the raw, uh, the beige color. Right, and again, um, as you get towards the end of your painting, still keep with your brush control. Um, so don't feel like you just have to fill in the space as quickly as you can. Um, and it just, something that I noticed in my class um, last week is just that you start to get a little more tired towards the end of the painting. Your patience is a little stretched thin by that point. Um, so don't feel like if you need to take a break, it is okay to take a break and then pick the painting back up later. But don't finish it just to rush through it. All 
All right. Oh, and let's see. Um, what do you? Uh, what ex- specifically are you asking for, Jen? For uh, five dollars, a monthly class for the five dollars. Are you talking about the Patreon? Um, five dollar monthly. That's what I'm assuming. And if there is a monthly class that you would like, uh, let me know and I'll see if I can get it on the production list. I am still, uh, have not gotten to the intermediate classes that I want to do for the Van Gogh um, and Picasso and Monet pieces. Those will be more educational. Um, Let's see, what was the other one? Oh, the grid method. So... That was another one on the list. I keep pushing it back, the grid method. But that'll be a good one. Um, And if you are interested in the grid method, there are many, many teachers and videos out there that are already doing it. Um, Just Google it. And it kind of picks up from um, that really simple grid method drawing video that I put out there to where you put your uh, four quarter, basically cut your paper in quadrants and then draw what you see. The grid methods just go into a one inch by one inch grid. All right. And for the Patreon stuff, um, I'll see what I can kind of come up with for the fact that you guys do for five bucks. I think it ends up being quite a few traceables that you get for free. Um, I'm not quite sure what else I'll add to that particular bundle, but I'll put it on the list. I'll put my Put it on the thinking block. Figure something out. All right, so just trying to apply that paint a little bit thicker. It's kind of getting lost in the process, zoning out to it. Oh wow, and it has only, it's only 11.30. It is kind of cool, even when I'm doing these videos and even with a slight little tech issue earlier, um, time just seems to stop. I felt like we were closer to 40 minutes and it's only been uh, not even, it's under 30 minutes still. And that's the beauty of art is just time ceases to exist. You kind of step into just your own imagination for a little bit. And that in itself is very therapeutic. All right, I go down to the even smaller pointier one. So don't forget, you've got these little tips over here and then the bit of the body shape. And then I will go back in and add the ear. All right, oh, I sorry, I see quite a few comments. Like I said, I was getting zoned out. <laughs> All right, so Jen's talking about having trouble gritting on the multiple size canvases. Um, Are you having trouble going from like a small five by seven image to like a 11 by 14? Um, You might have to put a, like a one inch grid on your image and then do a two inch grid um, on the canvas to help the enlargement. And again, I'm just assuming that's what you meant. All right, let's see, we've got another question on the traceables. Jan, um, you wanna be able to pick the traceables from Patreon. Uh, Patreon actually isn't set up to be able to do that, and I'm not entirely thrilled with the full Patreon setting. So I have an alternative. I haven't fully launched it on the Paint with Lovejoy site. Um, and it was easier to organize it on the Paint with Lovejoy site, but I have a library, a traceable library on there, and it's $10 a month. Um, every single traceable is on there, so and it's organized by subject matter, so it is easier to find. And the $10 a month, it's not for how many traceables you get, it's more just to kind of keep supporting Paint with Lovejoy. Because with the Patreon stuff, I think you get charged at a specific time each month. 
So I've had quite a few people jump on the membership, download the traceables, and then they cancel their membership. Um, and that's kind of not the point of Patreon. So I'm, I'm a little frustrated with their website. So if you would like to have more um, organized access to the traceables, I would recommend um, the library that is on the Paint with Lovejoy website. That way you could kind of pick and choose which ones you want to paint for that month. And again, just keep in mind that that $10 fee um, just goes to help support this because I don't get paid. Um, this is free on YouTube and it has been a labor of love for the last two and a half, three years. And I started the channel as kind of a response to art being cut out of schools. So I don't want to keep doing all this for free for the rest of my life. So your support continues to help it grow. And sorry, that was a bit of a tangent on there. And yes, you can make this traceables any size that you want. Awesome, and I recommend that. And you can use them as often as you want. Um, the okay, I'm sorry, I'm reading all the questions. So for the ten dollars a month, um, that is going to be on the Paint with Lovejoy website, and I'm calling them libraries. So look for the traceable library on there. Um, I will have a doodle library. Uh, thanks, Denise. I'm glad you're really enjoying those doodles. Uh, once I get a few more on there, I'll create that as a library as well. And I'm also going to be creating an educator's pack that has access to all the doodles, all the traceables, and any librarian, teacher, uh, homeschool person uh, can use those in their education outlets. So. It's been a crazy couple of months and I realized this morning that we've done about, I've done a, probably about a year and a half's worth of work since the COVID stuff started just to kind of get all this up and running and get everything going. Okay, so while my blue paint is wet and I'm gonna have to do this kind of quickly, I've got a little carried away talking, I'm gonna place the white on here in specific areas and then go back and kind of blend it in. There we go. get some on the top of that ear and then I will look and answer more of the questions so I do appreciate all the questions and even all the comments that you guys leave I take that into consideration as I'm developing new stuff um, for the paint with love joy because I do want to make sure that it's appropriate for what um, the users what you guys need okay so throw those white uh, chunks on there, clean that brush. This white will diffuse rather quickly into the blue. And these are considered the highlight areas. And if you do what I just did right there where you moved your brush too much and you lost it, just reapply that white and move your brush less. So you'll kind of find your groove with it. And you can be super smooth with your blending. You can maybe have it a bit more choppy and painterly, kind of like my style is. Um, totally your call. And the paint's pretty dry on that ear. So not adding a whole lot. And then I think we are ready for our black outlines and then I can answer more questions as I do those pop up. Awesome. Okay. And yes, Jan, um, if you can't do the monthly fee, then that way I recommend that you just purchase them individually. And then that way you have more choice over exactly what you wanna paint. Um, because the Patreon, um, at least through that, you can scroll back through all the old posts, but that's gonna you know, just take a lot of extra work on your part to find all the prior traces. Because as a Patreon, any tier, you have access to all the prior posts. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to see if I can come up with maybe different options so that way you guys can have access to more things. We're getting there. We'll find creative solutions. Okay, so as we do the outlines and kind of bring this, um, this will be the final step for the painting. I will go back over the, eye, uh, the nose and kind of redo the outlines. 
you want your paint to fully dry so that way when you're doing the outline here you're not going to mix the blue in with your black paint most of my paint is pretty dry just for a few places um, where i applied um, the blue and as you work with this treat your brush kind of like a pencil and if you need to put your pinky out use that as your pivot point i'm resting my forearm against the edge of the table even though it's kind of hard to see that but find something to kind of steady your hand and play with the pressure. Light pressure, let me flip this around. Light pressure is gonna be, create a skinnier line. More pressure is gonna create a little bit of a white line. And you want a wide enough line that you are overlapping your subject matter of Sonic as well as the background. And if you have varying widths of line on lines, um, on your outline, that's okay. That's just where you're painting for today. Your muscles are learning a lot as you do this. <laughs> no problem, Jan. Um, just even showing up here, talking about it to your community, you know, that's a huge support and that is an invaluable support. So um, I appreciate anything that you guys can do on any level. Um, because that's all I can ever ask from anybody. So that's great. And even just doing the daily demos from the beginning of the coronavirus and all the new people that have found this channel and you know, you guys are amongst yourself, um, you show up. And like I said, I just, I get so excited seeing people, you know, the number that are waiting right before I hit go for the live feed. So. There are multiple ways and forms of support, and we need them. This is a very diverse world. All right. And I'm really grateful that I don't really feel like I work. I feel like I'm just kind of sharing, you know, things that I get excited with, um, with my students and with the public and the ability of what this online access has done is really phenomenal um, and I couldn't have asked for it to have happened in a cooler way it's just interesting the people and things that come together at specific times all right um let's see I'm gonna actually I don't usually do this in the video but these are some pretty small lines so I'm actually just gonna flip this. So feel free to do that for yours if you need to at home. I've actually tried all my demos in the past to not do that, but today's a different day. So even if you've done something the same way uh, for a long time and you feel like doing it different, go for it. It's never gonna be the end of the world, at least in art. Please be safe in many other subjects. And let's see, if you are finding that your paint just keeps getting thicker and thicker and thicker, um, take a look and see if you've got a lot of buildup on your brush. And if you have a lot of buildup on there, clean the brush really good and then start grabbing more paint. Um, if you've got super thick paint, you can always add a touch of water to it to kind of slightly thin it out. You never want your brush dripping wet with water, um, but it's okay to kind of change the consistency to make it a little bit more fluid and easier to do some of these outlines. So basically still, no matter what with painting and creativity, you have to adjust for your variables. Ah, thank you for the newcomer that um, I am not even going to attempt to mispronounce your name because that's probably what I will do. But thank you so much. I'm really glad you enjoy the demos. Um, really appreciate that uh, that you're enjoying them and that you left a comment. So thanks. Uh, 
Um, medium gloss will thin it a little bit. You know, pretty much anything that you add to your paint, um, you know, changes the viscosity and changes kind of the, the thickness sometimes. Um, there's even what they call uh, extenders to make your paint uh, not dry so quickly. And that changes the consist consistency of the paint as well. And I think for the heavy body paint, you would actually have to add quite a bit of that medium to really diffuse it since you are starting with heavy body paint. Um, but possibly if you used it with even the Liquitex Basics or a thinner student brand, you wouldn't have to use as much of the material to thin it out. You would probably be adding it more for the gloss element rather than the thinning out of the paint. So as you're getting into some of these really small details, if it is really tough to do that, um, let your painting fully dry and you can um, use a Sharpie marker. So there's always multiple ways. Oh, nice. I just got some golden paints the other day. It was very exciting. I felt like a kid on Christmas. Okay, yeah, so just keep finding, Jen, the ways that you like using the golden paints and the mediums, and it's just helping you create the things that you want. So you're doing good. Right, and just keep checking to make sure it doesn't cut out. I wonder if it had a time limit on it because there wasn't really an issue for it to cut off today. Our wonderful tech mysteries sometimes. And I can definitely tell that I start to concentrate a little bit more when I'm doing the outlines. Um, and I tend to forget that I have people listening. Um, but I also tend to hold my breath too. So a lot of the stuff that I remind you guys, I have to remind myself too. So no matter how many years you've been painting, there's always some simple things that we forget to do and have to be reminded. And nothing's wrong with that. And I am going to go back over that little pupil and we will go back over that nose and then I'll flip it around. Oh, we still have a little bit of the mouth. Almost done. So see the great thing about acrylic paint, you just go right on top of anything that got painted over earlier. He's got a little bit of his mouth. Uh, actually, no, I think that was an extra line that we didn't need. We'll see when I flip it right side up. Let's see if we need to add that little dash. Make sure it's lined up. There we go. All right, so not too bad. All right, I am gonna take some white, put a few bold highlights on there. Let's see if we've got any other questions. Oh, okay, let's see. Nice, Liquitex and Golden are pretty much my professional glue. Um, first here, I use Chroma Acrylics and Liquitex Basics are the closest to the consistency that we use here. Um, I have not tried the Salvador paints. Nice. I'm glad they impress you with the pigments. Um, there are so many new brands that are coming out that are really cool. 
Um, I'm quite impressed with the Arteza watercolor paints that I picked up and have been using for the demos. So awesome. Cool. And again, keep trying different brands, different mediums. Maybe you like one color in golden, maybe another color in Liquitex. And you're just developing your um, arsenal for what you enjoy creating. And there's no limit to what kind of combos you can do. Okay, let's see. So last few highlights. I am going to put a little highlight on the eye. And again, just mimic as closely as you can the placement. So we've got a little catch light on this eyeball here and then even on the nose. And then there's kind of a little bit of a sheen on the shoes as it goes down. Just kind of cut it in half. And that actually about brings it to conclusion. Maybe extra little bolder highlight just on the ends. And if you're inclined to put a highlight somewhere where I don't put it, go right ahead. Trust your instincts. All right, and I believe we've got all the traceables for next week's um, demos on there. And now we're just gonna keep going and keep on creating. Yeah, this looks nice. Excellent, so please uh, keep sending me pictures of what you guys paint. Um, email paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Spread the word. Check out the online school. Come back for next week's demo. Um, just keep getting creative. Really like it. Yeah, I agree. The uh, outline definitely makes it pop even more. It kind of finishes it up. Uh, the Georgia O'Keeffe Lily. Let me make sure it is released on um, the Lovejoy Creations website. It might not be, uh, but I'll make sure it's on there. So check back this afternoon for it. Um, oh, on Patreon, I'm not quite sure if it's uploaded yet. So I'll check because I think the Patreon traceables, they're about a week to two weeks behind the live demos. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much again for hanging out with me this morning. Um, and I will see everybody next week. Oh yeah, we did go about 48 minutes. Awesome. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Cheers.